Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. MPs have voted to back David Cameron's controversial same-sex marriage bill after its third reading this week. But the Prime Minister had to rely on a £4 billion lifeline from the Labour Party to save his plans. It followed an amendment tabled by Conservative MP Tim Lawton, which suggested the bill should include an equal right for heterosexual couples to enter into civil partnerships. If passed, the amendment could have had major consequences for the bill's progress, so in a desperate bid to keep his plans on track, the Prime Minister had to cave in to Labour's demands for an immediate review of civil partnerships, a move that could cost the country up to £4 billion in public service pension rights alone. The bill has now passed to the House of Lords, where it is expected to face much tougher opposition. Lord Deere, a former police chief, is set to lead a vote against the bill when it is debated on the 3rd of June. Reaction to this week's events in Parliament has been widespread. Speaking on BBC Breakfast, Councillor Mary Douglas has said that gay marriage is not a part of Conservative core values. She criticised the lack of debate on the issue and accused Mr Cameron of being out of step with his own party. There has been no democratic mandate and the debate has been disgracefully curtailed. MPs were allowed to talk for four minutes on a matter that affects all of us in our most intimate relationship. If it had been properly debated, yes, fine. Also, the majority of Tory MPs are against this, and that is where the Conservative grassroots is coming from. Actually, David Cameron is out of step with his own party. And press reaction has also made uncomfortable reading for the Prime Minister. His determination to redefine marriage has been branded a crazy vote-losing obsession, an embarrassment and bad politics by three national newspapers. In its editorial, the Sun newspaper said same-sex marriage is part of a misguided drive which has created Tory civil war. It also accused the Prime Minister of casual arrogance and suicidal political instincts. The Daily Telegraph said Mr Cameron's push for change was insensitive and bad politics. They commented it's led to an impression that he is part of a privileged clique that looks upon ordinary members of his own party as swivel-eyed loons. And the Daily Mail has said the Tory leader is utterly at odds with traditional Tories over the issue, commenting that the gay marriage legislation, for which there is no public clamour whatever, has been an embarrassment. The coronation of the next monarch will include other faiths alongside Christianity for the first time in history. The Sunday Telegraph has reported that Church of England leaders have said that other faiths should be recognised to reflect the spiritual diversity of the nation. However, the Church has resisted calls for a multi-faith service, maintaining that the Christian nature of the ceremony is preserved by the law. The Coronation Oath Act of 1689 requires the monarch to swear to uphold the Protestant faith. They are then given the titles Defender of the Faith and the Supreme Governor of the Church of England. It is likely that in future ceremonies, representatives of other faiths are likely to be asked to participate in neutral ways, such as reading a text expressing shared values. Lord Faulkner has been challenged by a former health minister over the tabling of his latest assisted dying bill in the House of Lords. The former Lord Chancellor's bill would allow a doctor to help the suicide of a terminally ill patient who had six months or less to live. But Baroness Cumberledge has expressed her concern in a letter to the Times newspaper, saying there is no evidence for a change in the law. She said, A study a few years ago found that doctors caring for terminally ill people rarely felt that the law posed problems for the care of their patients, or that new laws were desirable. And Dr David Jeffrey, a lecturer in palliative care at the University of Edinburgh, called the bill illogical and said, Those involved in healthcare should rather be planning how to improve psychological care of patients and their families, rather than pushing to legalise assisted suicide. The Church of Scotland has voted to allow practising homosexual men and women to become ministers. It followed a report by the Church's Theological Commission, which set out traditional and liberal arguments. The Kirk's ruling assembly considered the report before voting in favour of a proposal which allows liberal congregations to opt out of the church's traditionalist stance on homosexuality. The moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, the Right Reverend Lorna Hood, welcomed the decision, saying it was a major breakthrough for the church. But the Reverend David Randall was critical of the move. He said the issue of gay clergy has been forced upon us by the revisionists who want us to turn our backs on what common sense tells us. 
Are we to stand by scripture or are we to go with the flow of social trends? And a spokesman for the Free Church of Scotland said, We believe that Scotland needs the guidance of the National Church rooted in the teachings of the Bible, irrespective of public opinion and pressure to conform. And finally, three couples from Cumbria who got married at the same church on the same day have all just marked their golden wedding anniversaries. St John's Church in Flukeborough was the setting which saw Norman and Mary Dickinson, Harry and Jean Winstanley and Alan and Anne Ackrig tie the knot. Norman and Mary were first to get hitched when they said their vows at 11am. Norman said, after we had been out a few times, I just knew it was love. Alan and Anne Ackrig, who met at a young farmer's dance, were next to say I do, with their wedding taking place at 1pm. Anne said, he could dance, that's what caught my eye all those years ago, and we still dance today. And at 2pm, Harry and Jean Winstanley also tied the knot. Harry remembered, the first time we met, I had a feeling that I liked her, but she did not want to know me. If I walked in a room, she walked out, but I managed to win her over in the end. Although the girls knew each other from their school days, they said it was by pure coincidence they ended up marrying on the same day, and they have remained friends ever since. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.